both. Everybody say both. Both Lord and Christ. Capital L-O-R-D. Capital C-H-R-I-S-T. Now the Lord is that spirit. And God is spirit. Jesus Christ was spirit and body. He was Lord and image. He was spirit and word. He was the Father and the Son. And the Son revealing the Father. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. He was prophet and priest. A prophet in that he spake to the people in God's name. And you see the body was the name. And his name is called the word of God. And the word was made flesh. And Jesus said I am come in my father's name. And that name is Jesus. <laughs> and God is always was and always will be spirit. But if you want to know how you can know him and see him, you got to look into the fiery eyes of Jesus Christ. For he is Lord and the Lord is that spirit and he is Christ and Christ is the body. And it's in that body part that we are made one with God the spirit through that body as we are attached to him and called by his name and we become one with Christ makes us one with God through Jesus Christ somebody say man and the kingdom of heaven is not in what you see built with men's hands the kingdom of heaven is within you. Somebody say amen. And God's told me that I'm going to preach the message that's going to unlock the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven in millions of lives all over this world. And multitudes are going to be healed, not because I'm great, but because he's great. Not because I'm righteous, but because he's righteous. Not because I'm good, but because he's good. And not because I'm God, but because he's God. Not because of my power but because he's got all power he's going to do this and it is given to you to know the mysteries the spiritual truths that are hidden from carnal human religious understanding it's given to you to know it and when you learn it and you begin to get the knowledge of it you'll begin to see that Jesus Christ was all that the Old Testament said he would be and the same God of the old is God of the new. Jesus Christ is the one and only one with all power. Give him a hand clap of praise. Give him a great big cheer. Hallelujah. Jesus, he who has all power, Lots of people don't know, but he was God, that is spirit, and man, and that is flesh. He said, I'm the good shepherd, and is declared to be the lamb. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah, and the lamb of God. The lion of the tribe of Judah, and the lamb of God. He was the son of David the son of Mary, the son of man, and the son of God. He can be just exactly what he says he can be. He is still the one who is because he is. I am that I am. Even after he raised from the dead, he appeared to those people walking to Emmaus in another form. The problem is, the problem is, that people don't realize that God, everybody say God, God. is a spirit. How do you know? Because Jesus told the woman at the well, God is a spirit. Do you think he slipped up the tongue? 
Do you think you made a mistake? No. He said, God is a spirit. And the spirit's like the wind. You see the trees moving, but you can't see the wind. Somebody say amen. Now, Jesus is declared by Paul to be the image of that invisible God. What is that invisible God? It's the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Well, now, Brother West, I just don't think all this is necessary. You're going to find out. You go trying to snoop all over heaven, trying to find the others. He's seated on the throne and says, who are you looking for? When you see me, you've seen him that sent me. He that sent me is with me. I'm in him and he's in me. Somebody say amen. Clap your hands all over this building. Praise God. Now, he is shepherd and lamb. Shepherd and sheep. He is prophet and priest. He is God, that is spirit, and man. See, you've got to understand in order to understand the revelation of Jesus that when you're talking about God, God has always been a spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, God's name has always been Jesus. Those names and titles given under the Old Testament were just descriptive of the secret name that God had. And it was not uttered for men to hear until Gabriel spoke his name. And that name is Jesus, which means that Jehovah is not just Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide and see. He's not just Jehovah Shalom. He's God our peace. He's not just Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is there. He's not just Emmanuel, God with us. He is Jesus, Jehovah, the Savior. Amen. Now, he is lamb and shepherd, shepherd and sheep. How many understands this? In order to understand his revelation, you must believe and know that God, when the heaven was searched, the earth was searched, under the earth was searched, and there was no man found worthy. You've got to understand that God, before he ever made Adam and Adam fell, God had a lamb slain before the world was. So God had to know that Adam would fail. He had to know that Adam would fall. And you and I and all of you fell while yet in the loins of Adam. The whole human race fell. But before there was a fall and before there was a death, there was a resurrection. And before there was a sinner, there was a Savior. And he was in the mind, the vast mind and the imagination of God. And God knew in all the generations of that man he made from the dust of the ground, God knew that when there was no one in that dispensation, no one in, that, in those offspring that could bring men back to God, God knew that he himself would have to put on the veil of that flesh and become that lamb and become that sacrifice. Somebody said, pray the Lord and come to this earth and do what no man anywhere heaven earth under the earth could do and he did somebody say amen he's got the power in the fourth chapter of the book of the revelations old John said he looked he said a door was opened in heaven and you know what that door was that door was Jesus that door was the opening of the kingdom of God it was the opening of the house of God for people to come. And there's only one way to come. And God entrusted this truth into the hands of his apostles. I know it's fault today. I know religious leadership won't have it today. But my friend, those apostles lived and they walked with Jesus and they were taught and he reached them the keys to the kingdom and they preached this gospel and this truth. And Paul said that he's going to judge the people by my gospel. If our gospel is hid, it's hid to them that are lost. It was a precious gospel. It's the glorious gospel of God. Somebody say amen. And I'm here to tell you tonight uh, that when he brought this thing, he opened the door. He gave the keys to the kingdom into the hands of Simon Peter. Somebody say amen. There's people today that said, Paul and old Simon Peter got up on the day of Pentecost uh, and went against everything Jesus said in Matthew chapter.
chapter 28, verse 19. But I'm here to tell you, he just fulfilled what he said. If he was wrong, why didn't somebody out of that 120 stand up and say, Peter, that wasn't what he said? Why didn't John say, Peter, that wasn't what he said? I'll tell you why. Because it was given to them to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. And he spake what God told him to speak. He said, the Holy Ghost will bring to your remembrance everything that I've commanded you to say. So they weren't against God. They didn't disobey God. They obeyed God. The danger is following people that say it don't matter. Heaven's too precious and too priceless. And hell's too awful to take a chance on gambling for it. Don't come at me and say, what if? Because what if's too much of a gamble. It's too much of a risk. After all, I want to live with him. And he said his people are different. He said they're peculiar people. John said he saw a door open in heaven. That door is the revelation of Jesus. That door is Jesus himself. He said, I'm the door. And he said, I saw a throne that was set in heaven. And one sat on it. I don't know. I didn't write this book. I got picked out to preach it and get picked on for doing it. But one sat on it. One sat on it. And in that fourth chapter, John described him. And then he got to talking about seven lamps burning before the throne. Lamps of fire. And he said, these are the seven spirits of God. We see those 24 elders and those four beasts round about the throne. We see that throne and one seated on it. The fifth chapter explodes as it says that there was a book in the right hand of him that sat upon that throne. It didn't say them, it said him. Jesus is not one of the he's, he's the he. You're making me mad, preacher. I'm glad I got some kind of effect on you. Because I'm telling you the truth. Well, that ain't what I read. So and so book said, Brother West. They said this, they said that. Lots of people can write you a lot of things ab about God. But there's a difference in knowing about God and knowing God. Amen. The difference in knowing about God and knowing God, the people that know about God say God can do anything. The people that know God say He will. Somebody say amen. amen. There was a book in the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And John said, I saw a strong angel, a powerful spirit. He said, I'll make my angel spirits and my ministers a flame of fire. I saw a strong angelic presence, an angel, a strong angel, proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. And there was no reply. And John said, I wept much, which means I cried and cried. Because he said there was no man. Everybody say man. man. No man found worthy. Heaven was searched. The earth was searched under the earth. There was no man found worthy. And John said, I began to weep. Why was he weeping? Because it looked like that nobody could open that book. It looked like nobody could loose the seals. And man's destiny and salvation depended on that book being open. And that book was a revelation of Jesus. And it was sealed and it was secret.
John said, I wept much. John cried over our poor little old human race. But then one of the elders came and said to John, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and loose the seals thereof. And old John was so excited. I could see him as he probably trying to get his tear-filled eyes cleared up. He said, I looked and he was looking for the lion of the tribe of Judah. But he said when he looked, he said, I saw a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. Let me tell you, you can go to churches that find his name if you want to. You can sit under teachers and preachers that will let you shout 15 minutes, get your tithes and offers and send you home and say it don't matter. You can go to churches that won't have him being the one with all power. But I find that he's got those seven eyes and those seven horns, which are the seven spirits of God. He's got all power in heaven and earth. It's in his name. If you want power and if you want to make it, when this thing's over with, you better get a hold of the hand of the man that can steal the waters and part the seas. His name is Jesus and all power, all power is in his possession. He's got the power. It's all in the Lamb. Ladies and gentlemen, it's in the Lamb. The Lamb's the body. And the Spirit is God. All power. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. He's that same one. In the seventh chapter of Daniel. Who was given a kingdom. That would never end. And a dominion over the earth and all that's in the earth. He's the one that came to the ancient of days. May I tell you tonight and today on this program that he that sat on that throne with that book in his hand sealed with seven seals written on the back side within, written within and without, God inside and out. That book became flesh. The next time you see the Lamb, He's standing in the midst of the throne. And there is no mention again of what others call another God or person. He that was on that throne in Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5 with that book in his right hand put that book into flesh and became that lamb. And he's got all power. Jesus said all of the things are delivered unto me of my Father. They're given by the Spirit. He was given the Spirit without measure. In the 8th chapter of the book of John, he told the Jews, he said, You have neither known me nor my Father. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. What he was saying is you've neither known the Word or the Spirit. You've never even known the Spirit or His body. Somebody said, praise the Lord. You could make them believe that God was in a rock. God was in a cloud. God was in that fire on, Mount, on the mountain there in that burning bush in Horeb. But they would not believe that God, the eternal spirit, was in that body of Christ reconciling the world to himself. Somebody said, praise the Lord. He is Lord and Christ, Father and Son, wonderful Counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father. 
which means father of this age and the age to come. And the prince of peace. I will never let men belittle him in my presence. For he is the one who is high and lofty. He is the root of David. He is the Lord our righteousness. He's the branch. He is Jesus. And he is great. And he is wonderful. And he is mighty. And he is majestic. And he is gracious. And he's all you need. He is Lord, that is Spirit, and the Lord is that Spirit. Is that right? Amen. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there he is liberty. Now the Lord is that Spirit, so he is Lord, he is Spirit, and he is body. Amen. Now, by the Spirit, listen to me real close. By Spirit, he is everywhere at one time. Omnipresent which means he's present everywhere at one time. He, he is as far as creation is. He fills everything that's made. You cannot go anywhere that he's not already there. The difference is realizing the angel of his presence. You see, his presence, listen to me, neighbor, his presence is his nearness. He is not going to move in congregations that stand against his truth where preachers stand and say he quit healing 2,000 years ago where preachers say he stopped he quit he doesn't do it anymore when the Bible says that he's the same yesterday today and forever he is Lord and he is Christ he is spirit and he is body he is spirit and he is image of that spirit Jesus said in the 8th chapter of John, he said, If you'd known me, ye should have known my Father also. If you knew the Word, you ought to know the Spirit. And they got angry at him. They got upset at him. But in the 14th chapter of John, he straightened the whole issue out to his elect and chosen. You see, God knows every one of you that's going to turn on him. God knows every one of you that's going to reject him. God knows. He told the apostles, he said, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And he said, from henceforth, which means from here forward, listen to this, 14th chapter John. From henceforth, which means here forward, you have known him and seen him. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know the way. How can we know the way? We don't know where you're going. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And he said, if you'd known me, you should have known my father also. From henceforth, you have seen, known me and seen me. Then Philip got in the conversation, and I'm closing this part of the message. He said, show us the Father or the Spirit. Show us God. Show God to us and we'll be satisfied. He said, have I been so long with you and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? You see, Jesus, the body of the Lamb or the Son, was God revealing himself to the world and God letting you have a chance to know him. He is the one with all power. Give him a hand clap of praise tonight. Give Jesus a great big cheer. Jesus, he, the only one that has all power. Everybody say all power. Everybody say all power. In heaven and earth, under the earth, anywhere, 